Hey family, welcome back to my channel. My name is Leah Elizabeth and this is Whole Soul with Leah Elizabeth where we're just following the flow of Holy Spirit. Now in last week's video, we talked about how um, once we start operating out of the good work that God has predestined for us to do, some of the things that we may experience while doing that is kingdom collaboration. And another thing that we may experience, which we're talking about today, is opposition. God wanted me to share of what to do when we face opposition while doing the good work that he has predestined for us to do. You know, I, I wish I can tell you that it's, it's, all, it's always going to be blue skies and sunshine when you are operating in the thing that God has for you to do. But I would be remiss to not tell you the full truth. Because in last week's video, we talk about how Nehemiah, he had unstoppable favor. But one thing that I, I didn't mention because there was going to be a part two is that he also had some opposition however God wanted me to share of what to do when opposition comes when we're operating in the good work that God has for us to do so here we go so as Nehemiah and the Jews were building this good work that God had placed on Nehemiah's heart to do, um, they had some enemies or if we modernize this, we can say they had some haters, <laughs> but um, specifically these enemies were um, Symbolic, Tobiah, and also uh, Geshem. And so there were other enemies too, but the Bible specifically named these names. And so they were just speaking word curses over their bit, over what what they were doing over the Jews saying that they were weak saying that they were feeble saying that the the wall won't last you know and sometimes we have those things sometimes we have those I call I like to call them vessels used by the enemy or demonic vessels because we have to realize that of course God has his willing vessels and the enemy also which is Satan the enemy also has his vessels as well so and one thing that we have to realize is that it's not really flesh and blood that we're fighting against, which Ephesians says so beautifully. We're fighting against spirits. We're fighting against um, evil spirits, the, the darkness, principalities of the world, the darkness and evil spirits in heavenly places. Those are the, thing, those are the things that we're fighting against really but this is what the enemy used and so the enemy had used symbolic Tobiah and also Geshem and so the number one thing that we want to do when the opposition comes and what we have to realize we have to pray for our enemies I know I know I know what you're thinking I know what you're thinking like no 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 you we have to pray for our enemies now um I, I think it's so funny to me. I think it's so funny to me because Nehemiah, he prayed for his enemies. However, Nehemiah, he prayed that um, God wouldn't forgive their wrongdoing. Now, Nehemiah was in the old covenant. This was the old covenant. But one, one thing we have to realize that believers today, Christians, disciples of Christ, we're now up under the new covenant, which, which is the dispensation of grace. And Jesus tells us to pray for our enemies. Now, we have to understand, like in last video, I mentioned that we can't be led by our flesh and we also can't be led by the spirit of pride right so we have to humble ourselves and be led by the spirit of God because this is the only way we'll be able to love our enemies and Matthew 5 and 44 this is Jesus speaking saying that but I say to you to love your enemies and bless those who curse you and do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you and and so um like i said this is up under the new covenant now which is what we go by now do do you stand in agreement of what that what the in, the enemies did to you of course not absolutely not however you must forgive them in order to move on because what that would do they will cause delay and derailment to your life so therefore you gotta you gotta move on you gotta move forward you know we gotta keep our eye on on what it is that god has called called us to do because if not we're going to cause delay within within our lives and on ourselves so we must pray and love our enemies and so going back to Ephesians 6 and 12, it says that for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. 
um, contending only with physical opponents. It's not necessarily the, the people that you see, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. That is what we're fighting against. We're fighting against evil spirits. And, and so what we have to do, we have to pray for that person's heart and for them to have a heart of repentance for what they're doing, to repent for their wrongdoing, but kill. We, we got to pray against their spirit that is attached to them so we gotta so pray for the heart pray that God will heal the heart but kill the spirit that is attached the unclean and demonic spirit that is attached to to them so that that's one pray prayer that I will would suggest to you and if you have more issues on forgiving your enemies I would highly recommend that you listen to this um, video that my pastor I he preached so beautifully I will link it down below in the description box it is it's really good so I would definitely highly recommend that you look at it because it was really good about forgiveness okay so we're gonna move on okay so my second point of what to do when opposition comes when you're accomplishing the good work that God has for you to do it would be to remain steadfast you know sometimes sometimes in this walk sometimes in this walk sometimes you get you get tired tired <laughs> you don't get tired sometimes you get tired <laughs> i'm talking about t-i-d-e <laughs> you get tired sometimes it can get tiring and sometimes you know you may feel overwhelmed at times however we have to know that the battle is already won and that the enemy is a defeated foe although we may have to face battle and i think that's the thing that kind of wear wears out the saints we we um we have to face battle we have to continue contending so Nehemiah and the Jews and the rest of the people that were building the wall, they had got weary. It says in Nehemiah 4 and 10 that the strength of the burden bearers is falling. So therefore they had got weary. They they became afraid. They was just like, oh, like what, what are we going to do? So they got weary. But the Bible tells us in Galatians 6 and 9 to not get weary and well doing. Because at the proper time, we will reap if we do not give up or if we do not give in. So we have to remember to remain steadfast and unmovable. And the thing about the enemy is that he's very strategic. However, what I love about Nehemiah was that he was strategic in remaining steadfast. And that's one of the things that we have to do. We have to be strategic in remaining steadfast. And what ne Nehemiah did, he set up guards. He set up men to guard them. And some of the people, they had um, a weapon in one hand, but they build with the other hand. You got to remember. Remember that you're building something. God has you building something for his glory and for your good and the benefit of others. So if you stop right now, man, other people are going to miss out. God won't get the glory. So it's, you got to keep going. You got to keep contending and know that you have power over all of the power over the enemy and that no thing, no thing shall harm you. Okay. But you got to keep showing up. You got to keep showing up to the fight, knowing that it is already won. One, okay because we are on the winning side okay so now my third point of what to do when opposition comes when you're fulfilling the thing that God has called you to do is that you got to keep your armor on you got to keep your full the full armor of God on at all times okay um, now that Nehemiah and the Jews they got word of what the enemy was plotting against them they were trying to harm them and they were trying to disrupt their work um, they had to guard themselves with the right armor <laughs> they had to guard themselves with the right armor. I love Nehemiah, what Nehemiah 4 and 18 says. It says that every builder had his sword secured at his side as he built. You got to see, you got to keep the sword secured at your side as you're building. You got to tell yourself that I'm building something. I'm building something. something. So therefore, you got to keep your sword secured at your side. And Ephesians 6 tells us what the sword symbolizes. The the sword symbolizes the word of God. Hallelujah. And the word of God is our faithful promises. In it has faithful promises. And um, according to Psalms 91 and at the end of 4, it says that our faithful promises are our armor and our protection. Those are the things that keeps us safe. Another
another translation says that it is a wall. It is a shield. Hallelujah. So the word of God, when you stand firm on the word of God, hallelujah, and you keep it close to your side, it's a weapon. It's a weapon that you can use against the enemy. Hallelujah. So we got to keep our armor on. And so when we're equipped with the full armor of God, that is the only way that we'll be able to stand firm against the strategies of the enemy. When we have on our shoes of peace, our belt of truth, our, our breastplate of righteousness, our helmet of salvation. And when we have the sword, hallelujah, which is the word of God secured at our side. And one of my favorite parts of our armor is that you got to hold up the shield of faith. You got to have some faith in order to stand against the enemy. Hallelujah. You got to have faith in God. And that is the only thing that will quench every fiery dart of the enemy. Hallelujah. I, and I like to say, and I like to say, you got to be suited and booted with the full armor of God and do not take it off. You cannot be caught slipping. Okay. You need your armor in order to build, in order to do the things that God has given you the grace to do. Amen. So you can't be caught without your armor. Keep it on. Amen. Okay, so point number four of what to do when opposition comes is that your discernment must increase. Hallelujah. Your discernment must increase. And I want to read, um, let's read Ephesians, not Ephesians, Lord, Nehemiah 6, 1 through 3. And, and it says, now when Symbolic, Tobiah, Geshem, these were the enemies again, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there was no breach left in it, although in that time I had not set up doors in this Gates. So Sambala and Gishim sent word to me saying, come, let us meet together. But they were planning to harm me. So this is Nehemiah speaking. And Nehemiah, he had discernment. He knew that the, his enemies were plotting against him. He knew that they were up to no good. And that's why it is very important to have discernment, to operate out of discernment. And all discernment is, is just being aware of counterfeit spirits in this case. We're talking about just being aware of counterfeit spirits and what's right and what's wrong. And one thing that I've noticed when I was reading uh, Nehemiah 6 and 1, um, Nehemiah and, and the rest that were building, they were almost done. And the reason why I say that is because it said that our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and there was no breach left in it. Although in that time I had not set up doors in the gates. So all they had to do, what I got from it, all they had to do was set up the doors within the gates. So that te that tells me that they're almost finished of building the wall. And, 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 and a lot of times when we're almost done on the assignment that God has given us, we like to become relaxed. We like to say, okay, we're done. Like we like to put out, take our armor off. However, that is the time that our discernment must increase. That is the time that we may have to go into a little bit more fasting and praying. So if the enemy can't get you when you're down and out, he'll try also try to get you when you're um, relaxed, when you're um, not vigilant, when you're not aware. And a lot of times when we're close to the end, that's when we become unaware. Again, we cannot take our armor off and our discernment must increase even at the tail end of you finishing the thing that God has for you. Whether that's you still being quiet, God may told you to not share this with anybody, but it's like you, you feel, you feel as though you're at the brink. I don't know who this is for, but you feel as though you're at the brink and you want to tell everybody, you know, what God is doing in your life. No, baby, this is a time God to give people a sign to you of who to tell, who to share, you know, those close knit family members, those close knit friends. God, he'll give you a sign people of who you can share to, whether it be your pastor, leaders of your church. He'll give you a sign people. However, you can't tell everybody. You have to remain silent. You have to remain vigilant. Don't allow um, your discernment to decrease in this hour. It's very important, okay? And we can read on and see how Nehemiah operates out of discernment. He, he was, I mean, he was spot on, man. And I love in verse three, it says that, um, so I sent messengers to them. He sent messengers to his enemies and told him, this is my favorite part. I'm doing a great work and I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave to come down to meet with you? Because I know you plan to harm against me. Not like, no, we don't have to meet up just so therefore you can investigate on my life or try to plot and see what I'm doing so 
therefore you can hinder it. No, I'm building something. I, I am building something. Come on, tell yourself, I'm building something and I cannot come down. I don't need any disturbances. You know, that's what Nehemiah said. Nehemiah said, I don't need any disruptions. I'm doing the work, good work of the Lord. And if you're going to stop me, I, I, you know, you can't get in my way. <laughs> Basically, Nehemiah said that you you can't get in my way. And, and, and you know you're at the tail end of something. I'm just want to add this in there. You know you're at the tail end of something when the enemy just start making up stuff. I mean, like like come on, really? <laughs> they just they just kept making up stuff. But Nehemiah was not falling for it. He had this one track mind of the end goal because he knew that it was going to be victorious because this was the good work of the Lord that um God had put placed on his heart to do so he he had one track mind and that's another thing that you have to do you have to have a one track mind and that's the last point is that you have to let the end be your aim you got to let the end goal be your aim however we should not make the ending we should not make what God showed us an idol we, we have to be very careful of not making this an idol but using it for our momentum using it to, for us to keep our eyes fixed on I love Hebrews 12 and 2 because um, Jesus he he faced he faced so much like hateful scrutiny he faced so much opposition people like people telling him he was blasphemous I mean all of this thing you, even him having to endure the cross however there was still a joy that was set before him because he he saw the end goal he saw the end goal he saw that he would be sitting at the right hand side of the father he saw that he was going to redeem all of humanity for all who receive him like he saw the end goal and so that's what we have to do and so that's why we have to strip off any and everything that would try to slow us down, whether that be our own doubts or our own insecurities or what, whatever the case may be or what other people say about us, opposition, whatever the case may be, those curveballs that the enemy tries to um, throw, throw in our way. We, we got to, man, we got we to gotta put that off to the side and keep our eyes fixed on the end goal because, yeah, yeah, it's the work that God wants us to do. So... I think that's it. Okay, y'all. So I think that's it. I think that's all what God wants me to share with you on today. And so I just want to go over just a brief overview of the list that, you know, of the points of what to do when opposition comes. And remember, you want to pray for your enemies. And um, the video is down below if you need further help on that. And so you want to pray for your enemies. And also you want to remain steadfast. And um, what's another one? You want to keep your armor on. You want to keep it your armor, the full armor of God at all times. Don't never take it off. Um, so therefore, you can stand firm against the strategies of the enemy. And also your discernment. Pray for a discernment. Pray for an increase of discernment. Amen. And also you want to let the end goal be your aim. Just like it was to Jesus. Amen. I'll see y'all next time.